Hello! Good morning, Grade 5. It's me again, Teacher Chet. And today is October 8, 2020. The lesson that we will learn today is about identifying fiction or non-fiction, fact or opinion, and propaganda techniques. So, are you all set? Very good. So, the first thing that we will know today is identifying fiction or non-fiction. So, fiction is any kind of narrative which deals with imaginary characters and events that are not factual. So, the characters in the plot in the story seem to be impossible in real life. Um, oftentimes, they are presented with much exaggeration, meaning in fiction, most of the characters here are imaginary. This comes from the imagination. Examples of fiction, other than um, books or stories, fiction could also be seen in the movies or in the um, in the television, okay? An example for that may be cartoon characters, okay? Your favorite cartoon characters, those are fiction, just like the picture here. The cat smiling there, okay? An example also of fiction is a story of um, a fox that is talking, okay? Or uh, a mouse and a turtle talking, or uh, Tom and Jerry, it's an example of fiction. Anything that is unbelievable or um, exaggerated stories that are um, so far from the truth or so far from the reality is fiction. Okay, am I understood? So that is fiction. Now in fiction class, I have here a map. So this is fiction. The two arrows here beside are pointing to its two examples. So the first example here is short story. In short stories, easy to read and has simple plot. Whereas in novel, it is long and has a more complicated plot. So remember class that in fiction, um, it is not always a short story that is um, from imagination. There could also be novels or even um, series of books that for example in the movies those um, superheroes okay those are fiction sci-fi science fiction uh as you can see there there are uh, a lot of imagination there because the man has powers but in real life people don't have powers that are um just like uh what do you call this moving items or um, something that is going out of the hand Okay, so the fiction. In short story class, this is more um, easy to read a kind of fiction because um, you can get through just for one sitting, okay. And class, in fiction, there are four components. So the uh, components here are characters, plot, setting, and theme. So the first one here is characters. So those one that are the protagonist or the antagonist or meaning ang bida sa story or in the movies or in the television or ang characters niya, okay, the people there involved or the animals involved, okay, are called characters. Okay, those are usually imaginary because it is in fiction. Now, in plot class, in plot, the events of the story Meaning those happenings, okay, the first one there is, for example, a, the story is about uh, the turtle and the rabbit. Have you heard that? The turtle and the rabbit, nga nagkuan sila, um, had a competition of who will win first. Okay, so the events there is that um, the turtle and the rabbit agreed to have a competition of who is the fastest. Okay, but then the rabbit just slept because... Uh, lang siya that the turtle is too slow to run and that he can win, that the rabbit can win even though um, ra uh, the turtle is so slow to walk man. So, hinam kay makalaka ang turtle. So, ang rabbit kumpiyansa ra kayo. Okay, that happened and then natog siya. That's the second event. And then the third event is that pagmata na sa 
Sa rabbit, sa turtle, na rin ito hapit sa finish line. Okay, that is an example of a plot. Now, let's go to the setting. It is the time, place, oops, time, place where the story happens. An example of a uh, setting in a story is um, like this. Once upon a time in a faraway land in India, so that's the setting. Um, the time there is once upon a time and then the place is a faraway land in India. Okay, so that is an example of a setting. Now class, in the theme, it is the message or lesson of the story. So from the one that I shared to you, the turtle and the rabbit, so the message there is to never underestimate others. Okay, never underestimate your abilities. So that is an example of message or the lesson of the fictional story. And by the way, class, in fictions, we usually read or watch fictions because we want to be entertained or we want to have fun. Okay? Now, let's go to nonfiction. Nonfiction is any stories or articles that deals with facts and talk about the real world. So, that's it. Nonfiction meaning you are into the real world, the reality. Whereas in fiction, you are in imagination okay i have your class six examples or six types of non-fiction okay um the first one here is essay so the author's purpose here is to inform persuade or to entertain and the characteristics of an essay is can be read in a one setting in a one sitting i mean so and it is written in paragraph form and usually have five or more sentences. So that is an essay. The second one here is encyclopedia. So I guess you have seen an, an encyclopedia, right? Okay, very good. So encyclopedia, it is to inform. So encyclopedia is very informative and the topics there is organized alphabetically and trees are short meaning and used for research yes it is used for research but it, because it is a re reliable source of information okay now the third non-fiction type is an autobiography or biography so the purpose here is to inform again and the story or account of someone's life often with dates of birth, achievements, etc. has a plot and can be read in one sitting or has many chapters. So in autobiography class, it is a life, it is like a life story of a person. Okay, and then you can see there the birthday, their achievements in life. So that's it. The fourth type is the feature story so the author's purpose is to inform and to entertain that's it class the characteristics of a feature story is an essay written by a journalist on various subject of human interest such as health food person technology it focuses in one topic or idea so in feature story class it's just like um, presenting to you something that is very much informative but as well entertaining. Others may be seen um, in magazines or in television, okay? Kanang mga gipang interview, mga personalities. That is a feature story. Now, let's go to the newspaper articles. To inform and to persuade. So, that's the author's purpose. Informative. Um, the characteristics, it is short can be read in one sitting again the literature basahon and focuses on one topic or main idea the last one is the textbook and its characteristics is information organized by topic used for references or organized chronologically so textbook meaning informative and used for references Okay, just like the encyclopedia. So, class, in nonfiction, this nonfiction in totality, it, it talks about the real world and it is to inform people. 
again, if we differentiate fiction and non-fiction, fiction is imagination, okay? There is exaggeration. It is also for, usually it is for entertainment or for us to have fun. Para malingaw sa ta. Okay. And then in non-fiction, it talks about the real world, the reality. Okay, there are facts or evidences. And it usually um, non are very informative. Okay, class, am I understood? Now let's move on to fact or opinion. So what is a fact and what is a, an opinion? So let's go first to fact. A fact is something that can be verified or backed up with evidences. It is... Um, not usually influenced by feelings. Now, it says here that evidences. So, evidences class may be in a form of a survey or a testimony of a witness or um, first-hand. Okay, katong mga naka-experience ato or what is being said or what is the topic all about those people that have witnessed okay, or has the experience of those um, subject or katang topic all about. So, those are examples of a fact. And um, there are written records such as testimonies, again, or evidences or observations that will uh, give a further explanation about that fact, okay, nice supporting ideas about that fact. Okay, and in addition, the author's language suggests no personal reaction, meaning um, the author does not try to um, put in his feelings or reaction. Okay, now this is an example of a fact. Saturn is the second largest planet in the solar system. This is an example of a fact because there are researches that prove that Saturn is the second largest planet. Okay? Now let's go to opinion. An opinion is based on a belief or view that cannot be proven as true or false. The topic discussed is greatly affected by personal beliefs. Um, so meaning, uh, in an opinion... The topic discussed is uh, mostly on the emotions of the uh, author, okay? Oftentimes, it expresses what is the author's preferences, okay? And the ba and there are also biases towards the subject, okay? Kung unsa ganyang ihang thoughts about that subject or the topic, that is an opinion. And, um... Feelings cannot be checked by accuracy. So there is no accurate or no evidences about the feelings. And once language brings emotions to the picture, we have begun to move away the world of facts. So once ganing nga, atong i-put in atong um, emotions or thoughts about a certain topic, it is an opinion. An example of an opinion class is like this. The movie is very sad. So that is an opinion because not everyone watching that movie uh, expresses themselves or um, allows themselves that that movie is sad. Okay, dili sila tanan mo agree that the movie you are watching is sad. So that is an opinion because there is no evidence that that movie is sad. Okay, that is just your emotions or what is you are or what you are feeling in that movie. Okay, do you understood the difference of fact and opinion? Okay, very good. And now class, it is also important to consider to consider different propaganda techniques in various facts and opinions. Always remember that oftentimes writers mix opinions and fact. So be careful and always be mindful in reading um, essays or, or articles. Okay, now that you know fact or opinion, let's go to propaganda techniques. So, let us know first what is propaganda.
Propaganda is a strategy used by writers to influence public opinion or an effort to manipulate other people's beliefs, attitude, or actions by means of symbols. These symbols may be words, gesture, music, banners, um, postage, and alike. Um, in propaganda class, there are hidden messages from it. And it is usually on uh, commercials or editorials or anything that may affect how the people will perceive on the text or the article. So there, uh, this is also into the using of fact or opinion. So magamit yapon siya ang kanin sa propaganda. Now the following are the common propaganda techniques used by many. The first one is the bandwagon. It's an appeal to the readers or audience to join, follow the majority. Otherwise, they will be left out. So this is usually what is, what is um, used in commercials. So for example, um, buy now because there are a lot of people using that item. So, ikaw, ganahan sa gamugamit kay daghan naman ang nigamit, okay? An example for that also is that there are millions of people who have experienced the wonder of product X1. So, what are you waiting for, di ba? In that sentence, it is an example of bandwagon because it is convincing you to buy that product or item because of um, uh, many people have already bought that one okay is bandwagon understood meaning aning bandwagon class is um meaning ikaw convince ka to buy something or convince ka about that article or topic okay a lot of people also believe in that okay or daghan sa nang nigamit the second one is glittering generality, a technique that uses words which demands approval from the public without thinking. An example for that class is, let us all be patient and understanding from the inconvenience brought by the vigorous frisking in every establishment. Especially in public transportation area, the authorities believe that your safety is primary concern. So, Glittering, so meaning gipanindutan ang storya para to get your approval, okay, without thinking. Meaning, hataga na kaniya o clue nga, nindut na siya, even though you haven't experienced it yet. So, there is a demand of approval already without you thinking or without you experiences, experiencing that situation or that topic, okay. Then the third one is the plain folks device. It convinces the public that the subject's views reflect of those common people and that he or she is after the benefit and interest of the common people. So in plain folks device class, um, it is where uh, the article or the advertisement will relate to us of uh, uh, common people in which um, you will be convinced, meaning... If kita, makakita ta ato, makonvince ta because we can relate to that article or to that advertisement. But then, the thing there is that the one that is in the um, advertisement or in the article is that he is after the benefit of an interest of the common people. So meaning, eh, na siya gain something from our uh from the convincing that he have made unto us. So, panalitan, if kita makonvince ta, nga, yes, sakto to ang iyahang gipakita sa ito ang advertisement or gipabasa sa ito ang article, well, he can benefit from it because maganahan ta ito and we will be convinced to buy that something or we will agree to what he is saying in the article. Mostly, plain folks class is used by politicians and advertisers. So, an example for plain folks, uh, Manny Villar showed how poor he was and how he rose from his doldrums by his sipag at chaga. So, in this example class, as you can see, Manny Villar is a rich man. But then he says that um, he was so poor and with his sipag and chaga, 
he was able to rose or to rise up and was able to get out of poverty. So in that class, makarelate ta kay people, um, many people are poor in the Philippines, right? So in the sipag of Chaga, in the minor mindset, nga if mag maningkamot ta, well, mudato juda. So that is painful. But the benefit that Manny Villier will get is that he will get the votes of the people. Big why? Because um we can relate to his to his life situation, di ba? Kaya kaagi man siya og pagkapubli so amo. So let's convince nga uh, we are convinced nga uh, si Manny Villier kay one of us because he was then a poor man before, okay? So, I hope you're getting my point, class. Okay, now let's have the fourth uh, propaganda technique, transfer. It is an attempt of the writer to make the audience or readers view a certain item to the same way as they view another. This is used to transfer positive or negative feelings for one subject to another. So, transfer, meaning what is the thought of the author will also be transferred to us. We will also be convinced. Okay, for an example for this class, when a president poses beside or in front of the national flag, um, that is a propagandist associate the president of the flag, which is a symbol of patri patriotism. So meaning, ang katong kuan, ang katong propagandist nga nagsulti ato nga that is nationalism what is gipakita sa president uh, he is transferring his thought on our so meaning it ang convince that we should feel or we should also think the same way to the president so let's say nga si Anana siya nga nag show og nationalism or patriotism ang president Kita said we will be convinced that the president is showing nationalism and patriotism. Okay, class, did you understand? Okay, just watch the video again for you to understand. Okay, number five, testimonials. These are quotations or endorsements which attempt to connect a famous or respectable person with a product or item. So, an example for testimonial class are Chris Aquino endorsing Nido milk it is testimonial because first hand daw nagamit si koan Chris Aquino so meaning he is using the nido nido milk so meaning or kato si Marian Rivera diba Zia is using um nido milk so meaning we will be convinced because uh he is a well she is a well known person no ba Marian Rivera right so if kita mo tan out we will be convinced uh, yes, that product is nice because uh, a person uh, um, very much known kay mugamit sa day ani. So, kita mugamit sa ta. Okay, so that is a testimonial. Another thing kay, just like Manny Pacquiao using Alaksan during his uh, fights. So, meaning, we will also be strong if we will use Alaksan during our hard times. Kung palitan mag kapuyon ta because Manny Pacquiao is so energetic, right? So, nana siya ay kuan nga pagkatao. Ilhado siya nga, oh, energetic. So, that is a secret. Di ay alaksan, kinagamit man siya. So, that is an example of testimonial. Okay, class? So, I hope you understood the propaganda techniques. Thanks for watching and um, if you have questions, just type it in the comment box. And teacher will answer those questions. So I hope you have learned something. And if there are confusions, just watch again the video so that you will further understand. Okay. And see you at, this at our class this afternoon at 2.10 p.m. Goodbye class. Thank you.